Yo, what's up everybody? Mike from Grassroots Canine and today um, we got a pretty cool dog that's in for a board and train. Um, it's called a Fila Sao Miguel or a Fila de Sao Miguel. Um, basically the dog is, um, his origins are in the Azor Islands, uh, Portugal kind of, uh, I guess, colony. Um, but I'm going to tell you a little bit of information about the breed in general that I have. It's a new breed to me. We've never worked with them before. I've, I've never worked with them before. Um, but also uh, then kind of some information on what the specific dog's goals are. So stick with us, stay tuned, and I um, hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, I'm back. I got up to go, but I figured we got to talk a little bit first about the dog. So it is actually, well, the, the breed's origins um, were as a cattle dog, a herding dog. Um, and they still use them for herding today, uh, but uh, you're much more likely to see them herding actual cattle um, and not sheep because they tend to be a little bit more on the, on the rough side. Um, so it's basically kind of like a Portuguese cattle dog. Um, they're really unique looking, really cool looking. Um, they're not a super big dog, but they're also not a really small dog. Sorry, I don't want to get stung by a wasp. Um, they really cool kind of brindle patterns on some of them. Um, their, their ear crops uh, are usually done for more of the working side of, of the breed. Um, and the crop is pretty interesting in itself. It's more of like a rounded kind of crop. Uh, the dogs are, are very unique looking, don't generally suffer from too many health issues, um, but definitely it can be a problem dog if they don't get the work that they, that they need. They, just from our experience with uh, the one that we have here, um, he definitely needs mental stimulation. He needs a job. He needs something to do. So if you don't have a lot of time to dedicate to a dog and you don't have you know, activities and, and mental stimulation that you can provide for this breed of dog, this probably isn't going to be the dog for you. Um, although you can appreciate them from afar, uh, you know, they're really good looking, um, really, really handsome, well put together dogs. I think one of the reasons may be is because they're not so popular um, and they haven't really been overbred, um, but definitely a stand up dog, really cool dog. So as I've been kind of re researching this breed, um, you know, I've come across some videos online of them doing some like protection work stuff, which looks pretty cool. Um, the dog that's here with us right now isn't in for any type of bite work, so we're not going to really be able to kind of test that function, um, but it looks like they do have some capabilities of doing that. Um, they're also, they, they remind me not so much of like a typical herder type breed, um, more of kind of like a, a herder crossed um, with like a livestock guardian. Um, so very, very kind of aware, a little bit edgy. Um, and again, definitely if they don't have something to you know, stimulate their mind. They're going to find things on their own to stimulate their mind. Um, they can be um, a bit territorial as well. Um, again, from what I've read online, um, but also from my experience with this, you know, one dog, not a really good, huge sample size. Um, I just thought it was a, a pretty interesting dog and wanted you guys to be able to kind of check him out and see him um, and observe and just appreciate the, the, the dog that he is. One of the other cool facts that I've found online that I thought was pretty interesting, especially regarding like a kind of larger breed, you know, it says that they should be 55 to 90 pounds for the males. Um, but the life expectancy of these dogs, again, from the, the information that I've been able to gather online, um, is around 15 years old, which to me really stood out because that's, you know, seems like a pretty long time, a pretty long life for, uh, you know, a larger size breed. Um, again, if it's like a, a Maltese or a, a Shih Tzu, like, you know, I expect them to kind of be around those ages, but 15 years for the average life expectancy um, seems really kind of high. Um, again, this is just information that I've been able to pull off of the internet. So we got to kind of take it with a grain of salt, but if there is any truth to that, um, that seems like a quite the, a long life expectancy. So that's pretty cool. And I think if it is true, uh, that it also shows kind of, you know, maybe good breeding practices. I mean, and the priorities that you get when you breed for workability, um, you know, form follows function. Um, but again, I, I've only seen very limited videos of these dogs actually doing like protection or bite work stuff. But, you know, I, they're bred primarily again for that cattle, uh, kind of cattle herding, and I think probably some livestock guardian type stuff in there as well, which 
It's pretty cool. Well, I figured we'll wrap this video up with letting you guys actually meet the cattle dog that we have here. Um, you've kind of seen glimpses of him as I've been talking right now, but um, his name is Bane. Um, and uh, he's here just working on kind of some basic obedience along with a little bit of that reactivity. Um, and what I talked about earlier is those, you know, why I'm, I'm pretty sure that these dogs had a little bit of livestock guardian type behaviors uh, or responsibilities um, because I see that very common, um, you know, very wary of strangers. Um, those livestock guardian breeds can be, um, and, and he really reminds me a lot of that, probably more so than he actually reminds me of the typical herder breed, like a Border Collie, even a German Shepherd or a Malinois. Um, but okay, without further ado, now let's actually go get him and I'll let you guys meet him and we'll talk a little bit about his training goals with our trainers. Let's go. All right, Andrew, we're here with uh, Bane. What are his uh, training goals? Bane's main training goals are uh, people in dog neutrality. So uh, he struggles a little bit being around other dogs without reacting. Um, but as you can see, he's doing very well. Tiger's about 10 feet away, also on mark. And Bane's nice and calm, no reactions. He's showing me nice engagement. Uh, and then at the same time, we're conditioning the e-collar for commands that he already knows, such as mark, some obedience with his sit and his down, and a little bit of recall as well. All right. You ever worked with uh, a breed like this before? I have never seen Bane's breed before, but he's very cute. Awesome. Well, let's take I him like outside him. and um, see how he does out there. All righty. Break. Break. All righty. Bane, mark. Good. Good boy. So right now I'm just overlaying the e-collar. So basically as I give uh, the mark command to Bane, I'm simultaneously tapping the nick button. So he's feeling that little tickle on his neck and he's gonna start associating that with me, right? Okay, break, good boy. So we'll go again, Bane mark. All the while I'm tapping the e-collar. Good, and it doesn't turn off until all four paws are on the mark. So it's very important. The pressure turns on as I give the command. It turns off once Bane's completed the command. Break. Oh boy. So with Bane, the mark is going to help create boundaries and structure, uh, as well as it's a great tool to help with dog neutrality. So, you know, if there was another dog here right now, although Bane might feel like he wants to go and react, the first goal uh, or the first priority for him is to stay on mark. So it helps create a, a neutral attitude towards other dogs, right? It gives him a job to focus on. He's got to focus on staying on mark as opposed to fixating on that other dog. All right, so much like we, uh, I talked to you guys about before, um, you know, it's, he's a pretty rare breed of dog for us to, to get our hands on and see working. Um, he's definitely kind of over the past couple of days opened up a, a bit more. Um, he was pretty reactive uh, the first time that we saw him. Not really a big fan of strangers, um, but from what I'm reading online, that seems to be pretty typical of the breed. Like I said before, I think that that's, you know, he's a herder, but there's so many qualities that seem like almost like livestock guardian um, to me. Uh, but he's definitely working and he's a, a really interesting dog. So I hope you guys enjoyed the, the video um, and we'll continue uh, with training Mr. Bain over here. Thanks.